Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to this Intro to Seaborn series. I'm Kimberly Fessel, and in this video, we're talking about the joint plot. Coming up in this video, I'll first give you a look at what a joint plot is, and then how to build a basic joint plot using Seaborn. I'll also show you how you can change the different types of plots that are displayed, and then how you can treat categorical variables. Finally, I'll leave you with some styling tips to customize your joint plots. Let's get started. The joint plot provides a concise way to understand both the relationship between two variables as well as the individual distributions of each variable. The joint plot actually consists of three separate plots, so let's look at each one individually. In the middle figure, what we'll see is that we have a relationship plot for how y and x are related. This can give us a sense of our joint distribution of our data. If we'd like to understand more about the x variables distribution, we could imagine taking these data and pushing them upward onto a new axis. Then we're able to imagine bending these data up into a histogram. This histogram gives us a sense of what the x distribution looks like. But of course we could also do the same thing by taking the data and pushing it over to the right to understand more about the y distribution. These two plots give us a sense of what the marginal distributions look like for both x and y. Combining all three plots together, we form the Seaborn joint plot. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Seaborn code. By the way, all of this code is available on my GitHub page. So I'll just go ahead and import the Seaborn library as well as the PyPlot module. And I did want to let you know, if you've been following along with this series, I did go ahead and update my Seaborn and matplotlib recently. So now I'm working with Seaborn version 0.11.0, and I'm really doing that just to showcase all of the new things that you can do with the joint plot. Then I'll go ahead and load in some data from Seaborn. So these data are about geysers, and so each row is just the duration and the waiting time between eruptions of a particular geyser. And it turns out that we have about 270 different rows in this data frame. I'll go ahead and set my Seaborn style to be dark grid, and we're ready to build our first joint plot. To do that, we just reference the Seaborn library and call up the joint plot. And now we just need to pass in what will be our x variable and what will be our y variable. So let's go ahead and put the geyser's waiting time on the x axis. And the y variable here will be the geyser duration. So there we go. It's really as simple as that. Just providing an x and y and now we'll get a seaborne joint plot. On the x-axis we have the waiting time and on the y-axis we have the duration. And like I was just talking about, we do have a marginal distribution for the waiting time and then a marginal distribution for the duration. Just one other note on syntax, you can either pass in specific series to the x and y variables or you could pass in the full data frame itself. So let's try to build a joint plot where we are passing in the names of the columns, so waiting, and y is going to be the duration. And we have this one additional argument data, which is where we pass the full data frame itself. And that will produce the exact same plot. So with that Seaborn joint plot, you actually have the option of displaying lots of different types of figures. So if you'd prefer not to use this default scatter plot, you could switch over to, for example, a KDE plot instead. You actually have six different options for the types of figures you can display. So let's take a look at some Seaborn code that will allow you to do this. So there are currently six different kinds of joint plots that you can create with Seaborn. And I just wanted to demo a couple of these different types. So let's first start off with um, here, we're gonna still do the waiting and the duration for our X and Y from the geyser data frame. Let's try to build a scatter type joint plot. So scatter is actually the default. So this will look the same as if we did not include this kind argument. But of course, we can switch over to a different kind of joint plot if we'd like as well. So here I'm accessing the kind argument and switching this now to KDE for kernel density estimation plot. So this looks pretty different. Seaborn has switched what is in the main figure here to be a bivariate KDE plot. And the marginals have also switched to now be KDE plots instead of those histograms. Let's also take a look at what happens when we switch this to be a reg plot. 
So if I switch that kind argument to now be reg, the center plot is now a reg plot. So you can tell that because I'm plotting this linear regression and I actually also have some confidence intervals here from bootstrapping. And once again, my marginals have also updated. Now I see both the histogram as well as the KDE plotted on top of that. And the last one I'll demo here is the hist plot. So we switch kind over to hist. What Seaborn will do when you switch this kind to hist will actually switch everything to a histogram. So of course we can see histograms on the marginal distributions there, but this joint distribution is also represented as a histogram. It's like a heat map here. So these darker blue squares are representing the fact that we have more data living in this area. The last thing I just wanted to point out is that this joint plot does return an object. So if we actually label the output of a joint plot with a variable name, if we checked what type this variable is, that is actually a joint grid. So the reason why this turns out to be important is you can take this variable g and actually continue adding more plots on top of your regular joint plot. So let's say I wanted to also include an extra KDE plot, I could reference this G, the joint grid, and just add one more plot on top of this. Now we'll see that I do have a KDE, a bivariate KDE, on the joint portion of this joint plot. The joint plot is certainly useful for numerical values, but what happens if you have categorical data? Let's take a look. So taking another look at our geyser data frame, it turns out that we have one additional column of data. It's called kind, and it contains a categorical variable, either short or long. So if we'd like to include this information on our joint plot, all we need to do is access one more argument called hue. This is the joint plot that we have been creating with waiting time on the x-axis and duration on the y, but we could add this one more argument called hue to now represent the kind column. So Seaborn has assigned a different color to every category that it found in the kind column. Here we just have two different categories, so orange represents short and blue represents long. But also take a look at what Seaborn's done on the marginals. So now we've switched over to a shaded KDE plot, and that's really just to show the differences between these two different categories. If we'd like to switch over to a different type of joint plot, we still have that option. And one thing I just wanted to note here, this kind is because the column in our data frame is called kind. This second kind is actually an argument of the joint plot. Switching over to KDE, we'll still see that we're able to see two different colors, one for short and one for long. We've just drawn a separate bivariate KDE plot for each of those two categories. Now let's take a look at styling that joint plot. There's actually quite a bit of styling we can do for the joint plot, so let's take a look first at changing the color. If we switch this color argument to be, let's say, green, that will actually change the color of all of the figures on our joint plot, both the main figure as well as the two marginals. If we happen to have a hue argument where we're displaying categorical variables, if we want to switch the color now, we actually need to reference a palette because we have more than one color. So let's switch this over to autumn. And so now you'll see that um, we have a different color palette for both of those different categoricals. Um, Seaborn, of course, has more than 100 different palettes that you can choose from. There are also several arguments in the joint plot that will help you control the size and shape of your figures. So first off, um, the joint plot is always going to be a square plot, but you can change this argument height if you'd like to potentially make this whole thing bigger. So I've switched it to 8, meaning 8 inches by 8 inches. We also have the option of controlling this space argument, and right now the default is 0.2, but we could decrease that if we'd like. This will actually just make the marginal distribution closer to the main figure. Of course, if you increase that, that would move those two further apart. And we also have the option of this ratio argument. So the default ratio is five to one. So this is just saying, how big will the main figure be compared to the marginals. So let's try to actually decrease that instead. Let's say the ratio is only two. The plot of the marginal distribution has gotten quite a lot bigger compared to the main figure in the relationship plot. And we can do even more styling, but we just need to keep in mind that there are two different portions to our joint plot. The middle plot is the joint distribution. So if we want to change style about that, we need to access the joint keywords. 
The outer two plots, however, are our marginal distributions, so we would style those using the marginal keywords. So getting more specific about our styling, let's first start off with those joint keywords. So right now I have the basic joint plot, but if I access the joint keywords, what I'm really doing is just accessing any keywords that I could pass to whatever is being plotted in this middle area. So right now I have a scatter plot. So my keywords here should correspond to keywords that I could pass into a scatter plot. So let's try to actually change the marker type for the scatter plot. Um, I'll switch this over to number five, which as you see are these little triangles pointing to the right. Remember, just these keywords correspond to whatever type of plot I have in the main area right now. So as you know, an extra example here, let's say instead of that scatter plot, I actually had a reg plot in this main area. If I access those joint keywords now, now I'm passing in keywords that correspond to a reg plot. For example, if I want to turn those confidence intervals off, if I don't want this shaded area here, I could switch that to CI is equal to none, and that will turn off the shading. The reg plot also has an option to, instead of just doing basic linear regression, we could actually do polynomial regression. So if I switch this to order two, now I'm including not just waiting time in my linear regression calculation, but also waiting time squared, which is why we see that nice curved line being fit to the reg plot. I can also style the marginal plots by accessing now the marginal keywords. So right now on my marginals, I actually have histograms. So of course I could do things like change the color, switch that over to golden. And this is nice because by accessing the marginal keywords, I'm actually only changing the color of what is on those marginal plots and not in that center joint distribution plot. But just like the joint keywords, my marginal keywords should match up with whatever kind of figure is on those marginals. So right now I actually have KDEs instead of a histogram. So the types of keywords that I can pass into this marginal keywords should match up with what I could pass into a KDE plot. For example, I can change the line width. Let's actually increase that to four. Or another thing I could do, since the KDE plot accepts this argument called shade, I could turn this on. So then I have shading below the KDE plot. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed learning all about the joint plot. If you have any additional questions, feel free to leave me a comment below or check out some of my past content all about Seaborn. See you in the next one.